The Sheltoe is savage. The Sheltoe Trace is a full-on adventure. There's stretches where it's not not very rideable. Oh God! Coming in as a relatively experienced bike packer, this trail handed it to me. It's barely a biking trail, but I kind of love it for that. We're just gonna leave it. The trail was really the brainchild of a Forest Service worker named Vern Orndolph. He pretty much single-handedly had this vision, made the route. The concept was to have a long trail in the Daniel Boone Forest. And besides being called Chautoy, uh, it's it has also always been referred to as Kentucky's Long Trail. The Chautoy Trace Trail runs from the northern terminus in Moorhead, Kentucky, to the southern terminus in Big South Fork in Tennessee. It's named after Daniel Boone, which is Sheltoe, which means turtle, big turtle, and that's what we have all over the place if you look on the trail. You see the Sheltoe turtle everywhere, and if you see a turtle, you know you're on the right path. Wow. Yeah. So good. Espresso for Max. The goal on this trip was to bike the entirety of the Sheltoe Trace bikepacking route in six days. So we connected the sections that are open to bikes to make a true bikepacking route that would as closely and legally as possible follow the Sheltoe Trace, the hiking trail, the National Recreational Trail through Eastern Kentucky. Bikepacking, like it's easy once you get out there, but not until you get out there. Our trip began in Moorhead, Kentucky. It's the only town on the trail where the trail quite literally runs down Main Street. So it's a great jumping off point, beginning or ending point for the Sheltoe Trace, whether you're hiking or biking. We shuttled 25 miles north to the very northern terminus of the Sheltoe. 60% chance of rain. Get our waterproof situation dialed. Yeah. And we started riding south down into Tennessee and the Big South Fork. Along the way, we passed right through Moorhead, of course, the length of the Daniel Boone National Forest. Cave Run Lake, Laurel River Lake, the Cumberland River, Red River Gorge. We hit Cumberland Falls and able to do it uninterrupted. I think on paper, the Sheltoe looks a lot more approachable than it really is in reality. I felt like the hardest part of that adventure wasn't necessarily the trail itself. The hardest part was just figuring out how to do it. There's um, not a lot of information out there about bikepacking in Sheltoe. Dude, this is where we sleep. The Sheltoe Trace, I think, redefines what a challenging trail is. There's a lot of resources online now that you can basically prepare for everything. And personally, doing something like this is super special because there aren't very many trails that haven't been ridden like this before. So it's, uh, it's an honor to be a part of this. It was really neat to be on the front end of the, the bike packers because we were just getting these looks like, what are these guys doing? Thanks to Austin for um, really getting the route dialed and how we, having a good grasp of the area. Uh, I did not do much route research at all coming into this. Not having the spoon-fed beta added a level of, of awesomeness. It's easy to think 50 mile days are low mileage days, and then you realize you're in eastern Kentucky and it's rugged and rooty and rocky. And Just the, the steep ups and downs, a lot of rocks, a lot of roots, it's a primarily a, a hiking trail. I, it was something I would have looked at prior to this trip and um, thought it was not bikeable. Oh God. 
I would say it's probably like a top five <laughs> difficult route I've done for sure. I mean, if you put it on paper and you write down the difficulties, you've got everything. You've got water crossings. You're going to get wet. Your bike's going to get filthy. You get lots of hike-a-bike. You have jungle. You have, you know, small canyons. The hollards come in, you know, from out west where you have these big expansive views. You're really in a smaller underground world. I mean, we rode everything from like Soupville, Two Track, really wet routes for days on end, it seemed like. We rode swamps. I mean, we only covered, what, like 50 miles on average a day, maybe not even. Leaving camp at eight o'clock and finishing up at eight o'clock some days, like 12 hour days. It's a lot of pedaling, a lot of hiking, a lot of slippery rocks, a lot of moss, a lot of creek crossings, a lot of scary creatures. Well, we encountered a lot of rain on the second day and with that came a lot of mud and it just kind of got in every orifice of us and the bikes. Headsets, dropper posts, shocks, and then the main thing was brakes. Like we all burned through brakes like that day. That was kind of a rookie mistake, you know? Like everybody says bring brake pads and it's like, bring brake pads. At various times on this trip, affectionately referred to the Sheltoe as a number of things. Sheltoe Shakedown, the Sheltoe Breakdown, Beast of the East, the Sheltoe Beatdown. <laughs> I remember one afternoon after lunch as we headed back into the woods, uh, Max looked over with a big smile on his face. He's like, I'm ready for my afternoon beatdown. And shortly thereafter, we were, you know, hike a bike up a hill in you know, 80 degree humid weather, but um, smiles the whole time, man. Oh, it was so fun riding with this crew. They were dialed. The crew makes all the difference. It was really fun to be able to hang out with my buddies and then for us to come together and just perform a really, really nice, cohesive bike packing crew. Um, our bikes and our bodies and our minds really took a, a pretty good beating. I would say the first day, it was our egos. The second day, it was our, our bodies. And then the third day was our bikes. Um, and then for me, the fourth, fifth, and sixth day was my soul. We hammered the pavement and then we slowed to a crawl on the single track. It's very rugged. It's somewhat unforgiving in places. And then it's absolutely enjoyable and fun in so many others. We hit some just unbelievable, like tranquil gravel roads, which were a nice breather, you know, because the single track we were probably moving like five, four miles an hour, pretty stinking slow. So you wake up and you look at the map and you don't know, is it a dirt road? Is it single track? Am I going to be going 15 or am I going to be going four? I think I've come to know what East Coast riding is on this trip. It's very just hilly, steep, but fun. If I were asked how to describe the Shelto in one word, to me it's rewarding. Nothing I've done in life that's really, truly rewarding has come without challenge. And the Shelto is, is no exception. Even though I have some segments I still haven't completed yet, it's so rewarding to, to go out there and hike your bike up these and down these you know, steep ravines, ride on some pristine buffed out single track, ride on some really technical, rocky, really rooty sections, and see some of the prettiest country you've ever seen. But you gotta work to get there. There's, um a peace that kind of comes over you after after going to the well like that and that's what I do it for you know it's like uh, it feeds a sort of hunger for adventure I think when I'm out there on the trail my mind uh, 
doesn't tend to wander as much. It's a pleasant feeling being on the bike for six days and uh, you really get into uh, a really unique mindset. I spend so many months like toiling away, like freaking out about what I'm gonna pack, what I'm gonna, you know, how I'm gonna handle any foreseeable situation and then all of a sudden it doesn't matter, you know, I've just got what I got and it's the ultimate freedom. It's that satisfaction for me um, to push through, uh, I mean, to stick with it. Just being able to look back and have that with you for the years to come and just really, really appreciate um, the challenge for what it was worth and sharing it with all the, all the friends that we, we had on this trip. Going into the unknown and leaning into the difficulty is, is a practice. I don't know where I'm gonna sleep. I don't know what the next meal is gonna be but I don't have to go home at night. It's just raw, I love it. I think oftentimes Kentucky does not find itself at the top of many people's travel list. Um, but I think it should, both for its hospitality, um, its wonderful, interesting, and unique culture. Kentucky's a lot more than horses and bourbon. I think the Sheltoe is a local, regional treasure that finally is getting its due that's living up to the potential Vern Orndorff had when he worked with the Forest Service to establish it. The Chateau Trace is an important element in the national trail system. And it's our responsibility to shepherd that concern and make sure it's there for, for your kids and your grandkids, like all trails. I think we saw maybe five groups of people over 300 miles. I mean, compare that to anywhere else. I, I feel like pretty lucky to get to get to be riding out there alone. It, it was, um, it's a special place. At first glance, it's unassuming. I think maybe that's what's so magical about the Sheltoe is those gems, those jewels, those hidden hollers you're not going to experience and very few people are ever going to experience unless they put in the work, the effort to get there. And to me that's kind of what the Shell Toe is all about. It's probably going to kick your tail along the way, but it's worth it.